Hi, I'm Maxine. Anything I can help you with? We came from all parts of life and all over the country, but we did come together here and somehow found each other. And by finding each other, we were able to end up producing something creative and beneficial to the rest of the city. It was the right time at the right place, at the right time on the planet. It was the peak of the sexual revolution. Now, the original name of the theater was the Angels of Light Free Theater. However, one of the acts came up with this idea that it would be a satire on the Rockettes, but it would be a chorus line called the Cockettes. And when the song ended, the audience went completely crazy and started to storm the stage. And we did it all over again and started taking our clothes off. And so there we were, naked with a pile of clothes around us. Everyone loved the name Cockettes. They thought Angels of Light Free Theater, okay, too long. Cockettes, that's what you are, man. In the past, drag has always been this thing where it was an assumption that it's a man either making fun of or paying homage to a woman. And drag changed in San Francisco. Drag became a platform for people, regardless of gender, to express themselves and to express their art. And so, yeah, you can be a man dressed up as a woman, but you can also be a man dressed up as a man, or a woman dressed up as a woman, or a woman dressed up as something that is neither man or woman, or vice versa. The Cockettes had no rules. They were anarchists, theatrical anarchists. It wasn't about gay or straight or this or that. It was about sexual role confusion. When the Cockettes were first butting around out there in the 60s and 70s, Gender was still very much seen as, you know, as binary, as uh, male or female. Today, there are definitely people who are living neither male nor female and don't care to define themselves as male or female, and the Cockettes help revolutionize and blaze that path. Be yourself. Be real. We have 20,000 or more people in this park celebrating with us because we're all allowed to be who we are. We're authentic in our own selves. We love all the original cockettes, and we love the new cockettes who are coming up. The Thrill Peddlers, they're a fabulous group. In 2008, Sweet Pam had come across the Thrill Peddlers Theater, the Hypnodrome, and she told me and Fayette and Scrubbly, we must see this theater. And it soon became clear that this was the venue to remount cockettes shows a modern-day version of what the Cockettes were in miniature at Thrill Peddlers. I'll buy your wonton, little girl. I'll eat your apples, too. Cheer up and don't be blue. I'm here to make you my oriental pearl. If there is ever a play that encompasses the aesthetics, the vibe, and the joy and the magic of the 70s, it's Pearls Over Shanghai. We originally were just scheduled for a month or two to run the thing, but the thing had legs and kept going and going and going, and the run ended up being 22 months. We are our own ensemble. And Cockettes are an active part of making this work with us. Then I must come to you. What it gives you a chance to do, I think, is to feel the material revived and living. <laughs> Therefore, be it resolved that the San Francisco Board of Supervisors recognizes and commends the Cockettes on the occasion of their 40th anniversary, the year-long run of Pearls Over Shanghai, the cast, all the surviving Cockettes, and today is Pearls Over Shanghai Day. Yeah! Another of our superstar tribute nights here at Tranny Shack at the DNA Lounge. Tranny Shack started in 1996 and it became this thing, this institution. This is not 
simply a man in women's clothing getting up on stage and pantomiming the words to a song. They're telling a story. They're letting you in on a mirror of themselves. They're working out some issues they have about themselves right there for you on stage. You never know what to expect at a tranny shack show. The absurdity and the over the top and twisted things that the cockheads do definitely plays in the tranny shack. You see, it's because of events like this, you have to literally teach the children. A lot of the great queens in San Francisco perished from AIDS and these children rose out of the ashes and understood that there was an important legacy and message to deliver. Drag to me is hyper theater. Um, and it's sort of street theater. It's theater taken outside of the normal context of a theater. We have an open dressing room during the intermission. The performers perform during the intermissions all over the building. It's a community event. We're trying to build community and kickstart that conversation about what community is, how can we foster it in this present moment. Burning Man has definitely succeeded in keeping the spirit alive, the spirit of the hippie culture, the spirit of the cockettes, everything that was vital to the culture in those days now exists in the desert at Burning Man because they've made a conscious effort to be non-corporate and it's certainly not about the money even though it generates a lot of income they funnel it into the art community. It's about play. <laughs> it's about getting everybody involved in play. <laughs> Really, really proud to be part of a legacy of performers in San Francisco who've infused their love of movies and Hollywood with appropriation and drag and, and making it something that's their own and transgressive and dirty and weird and wild. The Cockettes had a group consciousness and everyone brought their unique consciousness and personality to the mix, which was what made it fantastic. And I think that that's one of the most important things, is working with the group. The people in San Francisco, everyone forgets, there was a very few people that created a very large movement. And we accomplished it because we had that intent. Shows that we ain't gonna stand shit. Shows that we are united. Shows that we ain't gonna take it. Shows that we ain't gonna stand shit. Shows that we notion of coming out and and being visible and claiming your rightful place in society that's the real subtext there i have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed you have to create your own world and you have to create whatever change you want you have to do it it's subversive and nonconformist, and it doesn't answer to anyone and it doesn't care what anyone thinks about it and um those are all like majorly attractive concepts to me. It doesn't have to be a $60 ticket. It's seat of the pants. I think that's part of the magic of all of these avant-garde movements is they're very kind of on the fly. It's amazing that there's been such a resurgence of all this stuff. It's just amazing that the magic is still there, that people still respect what we did back then, and that in a sense we changed somebody's lives and continue changing lives to this minute and it keeps going and going and going. You live in the present moment and then you take all that information from the past and the present moment and you help dream the culture forward. Soothe me.